So the question here is Kilan's dehiscence is out pouching of oropharynx, nasopharynx, laryngopharynx, and trachea. So uh, we'll be just discussing about the Kilan's dehiscence. Before that, I'll just give you an overview of the various constrictors of the pharynx, right? So if you see here, so this this thing is the base of skull. This is the base of skull, and yes, there will be a mucus lining of the pharynx. This this whole area is the mucus lining of the pharynx, and between the muscles, these are the constrictors actually the constrictors of the pharynx. This is the superior constrictor. This is the middle constrictor of the pharynx. And this is the inferior constrictor of the pharynx. Now there will be a space that will be seen between the base of the skull, okay, and the superior pharyngeal constrictor that is known as the sinus of Morgan-E. So this is the superior constrictor here, and this whole space that is between the base of the skull and the superior constrictor. This is the illustration actually, and that is known as the sinus of Morgan-E. Sinus of Morgan-E. Now I'll be giving a brief review about this: the sinus of Morgagni, that is the space between the base of the skull and the superior pharyngeal constrictor. And uh, sometimes a question is asked on the structures that passes through the sinus of Morgagni. So the structures that are passing through the sinus of Morgagni: one is your eustachian tube, second is the tensor valley palatini. Then the third one is going to be your ascending pharyngeal artery. Okay, ascending pharyngeal artery. The fourth one is your ascending palatine artery. Ascending palatine artery. Okay, so these are the various structures that pass through the sinus of Morgagni. Now uh, we are more interested in knowing about the various uh, constrictors here, and then we'll be discussing about the inferior pharyngeal constrictor. So yes, this is the. If we see this, this is going to be, or better, if we see this, this is the superior constrictor, this is the middle constrictor, and this is the inferior constrictor, right? Now we'll be focusing on the inferior pharyngeal constrictor. So this whole thing is going to be your inferior pharyngeal constrictor. How uh, is the whole uh, criteria here actually? So the uppermost is like this cup-shaped one, that is the superior constrictor. Then you will have an insertion into the middle constrictor, and then you will have another insertion into the inferior constrictor. So if I just enlarge this whole constrictor like this. So it would look like this. So basically, the inferior constrictor has two uh, parts, right? So there will be two parts of the inferior constrictor. One part is going to be your thyropharyngeus muscle, thyropharyngeus muscle, and the second one is going to be your cricopharyngeus muscle, pharyngeus muscle. So actually, this is going to be your thyropharyngeus muscle, and this is going to be your cricopharyngeus muscle. Now, if you see it closely here, this is the inferior constrictor, and this muscle that is the thyropharyngeus and the cricopharyngeus. Between these, there is a weak area. Now, this whole area, this whole area is a weak area, and this particular area is known as the Killan's dehiscence. This is known as the Killan's dehiscence and this particular area is seen in the laryngopharyngeus area of the pharynx yes the pharynx has three parts pharynx is further divided into three parts the nasopharynx the nasopharynx is the uppermost then you have the oropharynx and after oropharynx you have the laryngopharynx now these muscles, the inferior constrictor is present in the laryngopharynx, and that's why you will be having these two muscles and the area, the weaker area between these, 
that is the class dehiscence dehis and that is basically known as the posterior deficiency present between the two muscles that is thyropharynges and the cricopharynges okay that is called as the class dehiscence and that is seen in the laryngopharynx so by now we are more clear about the laryngopharynx now there is a pouch that is known as the duncus diverticulum and uh, that is a pharyngeal pouch that comes out of the glans dehiscens okay so i'll just explain you how if you see this particular area right here you will be seeing a diverticulum right actually what happens whenever uh, this is a weak area between the two muscles uh, the thyropharynges and the cricopharynges so this is the thyropharynges muscle and this is the cricopharynges muscle here so between these two there is an area which is weak that is known as the glans dehiscens sometimes there is out pouching of this particular glans dehiscens and that forms a pharyngeal diverticulum that is more accurately known as the zenkers diverticulum right so basically this is seen in what in the thyro uh, in the between the thyropharynges and cricopharynges muscles and that particular thing is seen in the laryngopharynx part of the pharynx so answer to this question the glans dehiscens which is a uh, going to out pouch and form a zenkers diverticulum that is seen in the laryngopharynx so answer 3 is going to be the correct option